What happens to stocks when bonds go down? In this video, we'll show you a proven and back-tested strategy based on the relationship between bonds and stocks. You'll find out what happens to stocks when bonds go down. However, before we dive into the details of this back-tested approach, let's first explore why it's crucial for stock investors to keep a close eye on the bond market. Financial theory revolves around the relationship between stocks and interest rates because interest rates determine the value of stocks. High interest rates discourage investors from owning risky assets like stocks unless they are adequately compensated for taking on that risk. Conversely, when interest rates decline, it becomes more attractive to own riskier assets like stocks, gold, and Bitcoin. Let's take a quick look at bonds. A bond pays the same coupon annually until it matures. For example, a bond with a 5% coupon pays 5% each year until it matures, which could be 20 years or more. However, during the bond's life, interest rates fluctuate significantly. If interest rates decrease, the 5% coupon becomes more attractive, and investors bid up the bond's price to reflect the falling rates. As a result, stocks and interest rates have an inverse relationship. It's worth noting that stocks are riskier than bonds. This is because if a company goes bankrupt, bondholders receive their money back before equity holders. Therefore, bonds are less risky than stocks. Our hypothesis is that a falling bond market is not good for stocks because interest rates rise, which makes it less attractive to own stocks. Let's backtest what happens to stocks when bonds go down. We are long stocks, SPY, when bonds, TLT, are below the end-day moving average, and we sell when it's above the end-day moving average. For example, when TLT crosses below its 15-day moving average, we buy SPY at the close. When the close of TLT crosses above its 15-day moving average, we sell SPY and are out of the market until TLT later crosses below its 15-day moving average. What are SPY and TLT? SPY is the ETF that tracks the S&P 500 and TLT is the ETF that tracks U.S. 20-year treasury bonds. When TLT goes up in price, the interest rates go down and vice versa. To conduct our backtesting, we performed an optimization test that involved analyzing a range of moving averages from 5 days up to 100 days in intervals of 5 days. This resulted in a total of 20 backtests. Here are the results. The first column displays the number of days in the moving average, while the subsequent columns show the trading outcomes for each specific number of days in the moving average. The third column is particularly significant as it indicates the average gain per trade. Notably, the averages listed in column 3 were lower for all rows compared to any random day. Let's look at a specific backtest. We chose the 15-day moving average. This is what the equity curve looks like from 2003. As you can see, SPY's performance is weak. SPY increased 9.8% annually in this period, and our strategy returned less than 1% annually. In our analysis, we conducted 355 trades with an average gain of 0.16% per trade, an annual return of 0.86%, and a maximum drawdown of 50%. So we can conclude that we hardly make money in stocks when bonds go down. Interestingly, when we reversed the buy and sell signals, we observed much better results. However, we'll delve into that further in our next video, where we explore the effects of rising bond markets on stocks. Stay tuned. We stop here for today and hope you like and subscribe, and visit our website to find hundreds of other strategies for many other asset classes. Good luck trading!